Tracy, we get a lot of questions. A lot of times home buyers, first time home buyers in particular, but any home buyer, maybe if somebody hasn't done it in a while, like questions that just come up. And a lot of times maybe they're not ready to reach out to a realtor. So we're going to deal with some of these questions that come up for home buyers so and answer some of those questions. So first and foremost is what can I afford? Ah, yes. And we hear that, don't we? Yeah. What can I afford? And one of the things that's interesting is not just determining how much house you can realistically afford, but it's how much you want to afford. A lot of times it's easier if we back into it from what's your monthly payment comfort, and then we get with a great local lender to figure out what you could afford based on the monthly payment relating to the home price. Yeah. Getting with a great local lender and partnering with them and us as your realtor partner, we're like the triangle of, of partnership that all gets together to find out what you can afford and what you're comfortable with. Yeah. And what programs are out there for you as a buyer? And that leads into the next question is, how much down payment do I need? Our listeners know the answer to this, but 20% down payment is not the traditional down payment anymore. Many loan programs allow for down payments as low as three to 5%. And putting less down does mean you probably will have to pay mortgage insurance. But there are two loan programs for sure out there with no money down and no mortgage insurance on the veteran. So if you qualify for a VA loan, and then there's the USDA loan for outlying areas where it's a zero down program too. So yeah, so the USDA DA loan is for rural areas. So most of Valencia County, some but, parts of Sandoval, some parts of Santa Fe County. Torrance mo for most sure. Of Torrance. Yeah. So there isn't a traditional how much down payment anymore. That's a wives tale. That's an old stat. Yeah. And for a lot of people, they'd like to do the 20% down. It, it is, if they can afford it, it is a financially a, a better decision, but it's not required. Yeah. One of the things I want to add in there, Tigo, is a lot of people will say, call different lenders and find out what their rate is today. I think that doesn't make any sense, honestly, because rates change by the hour. You could call one lender in the morning and one in the afternoon and they have different rates and you decide to pick a lender because the rate was an eighth a point lower or something. But what a lot of people forget to, to look at is how much is that lender going to charge you to do the loan? right? Sometimes they don't realize that they're giving you a rate with some points attached to it to make it sound low or that they charge a whole point for their fees versus some of our great local lenders who have very low cost of what they charge you to do the loan. So really uh, important. And that really leads into the next question is what other costs should a buyer be prepared for when purchasing a home other than the down payment? Sure. So beyond the down payment, there are some closing costs, right? It could be a couple of percents of the purchase price, even depending on the loan program you choose and the lender you choose. But there's moving expenses, which a lot of people don't take into account when they're thinking about moving it's on your property or updating it, putting that fresh coat of paint on that you want, even though maybe the house was just painted. There are some inspection fees, right? So most of the buyers these days in our market are paying for their own inspections as a part of their due diligence when they're under contract. So that could be a full home inspection, could be a termite inspection. It could be a plethora of other inspections that are out there. But moving in is expensive too, right? Think about everybody and they go to Target and they buy the new doormat and the new shower curtain and the new... So exciting. Uh, it's very exciting. So a lot of times there's just costs once you move in. But then there's homeowner's insurance. When you're closing on a new property, they usually collect one full year for homeowner's insurance plus a couple of months. So when it's due again next year, they have the money in the account ready to pay for it. And that's the escrow. They that's start, the they escrow. Start the escrow. Yeah. And the property taxes. But you're going to get a credit for the current year against property taxes. But when they're due for the year, that'll be for you to pay for. So that's besides down payments. Yeah. Do you need a... I think this is a really relevant question today because we know there's been a lot of changes in the way organized real estate is being practiced over the last month or so. If you've been following us, you probably know, but does a buyer need a real estate agent or a realtor to help them buy a home? I know. I certainly... I know we're very biased on this question, but I think we can... Yeah, I think yeah. It's, it, we're being 
or of course bias, but before you and I were in real estate, did we use realtors to help us buy or sell homes? Of course. hundred percent, right? When we bought our office building, did we use- We were both realtors. We're both realtors. We used a commercial realtor to help us buy Correct. our office building. So a, a buyer's agent can be invaluable in guiding you through the process, especially a first timer, but even people who have bought before or sold before, it's all new. Do you have all the resources for all the vendors and all the contractors and people that you need? Have you looked through our, what is it, 23 page purchase agreement? Understand what all the implications are. I think there's a lot of hand holding. And even for new construction, the major builders have their own contracts to go through, but we sit with our clients regularly through those and go through the contracts, listen in while the new home rep goes through them and we can help negotiate those offers and navigate the paperwork. Yeah. yeah. I know the next question is okay. how long does the process take? You take that one. Yeah. How long does the, the process take? So if you're buying a home, there's a lot of statistics about there, how long you'll be looking online, right? Most people start their home search online. Now right. they go to the right. realtor.com, our website. Yeah. Go to our website. You know, they start looking for homes and, oh, yeah, that looks interesting. That looks interesting. And they start saving them. There's been different stats over the years. Like how long are you actually looking at homes online before you actually raise your hand or reach out to a, a realtor to, to really start engaging? So there's that step. So once you've said, okay, I'm ready, you start talking to a realtor, you, you schedule a look at homes, you do all that. Once you're under contract, meaning, okay, you've negotiated terms, you've decided on the price in all the terms, you're generally looking at 30 to 40 days, depending on loan and other stuff and how quick inspections can happen to go to closing. And there's a lot of stuff that happens from that point. You go under contract or pending, as we call it, till you're actually closed and, and take ownership. And a lot of stress during that period, right? Just a, just All a, sorts of things. And when somebody little. like the lender asks you for something, they want it like yesterday, but you have life, right? You're at work and your kids need something and blah, 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 but they need it. One of the things though, Tigo, that's an interesting from, from my perspective, because I still show homes to buyers, you're mostly doing our marketing and our behind the scenes operations and systems and being a voice to the world, right? Is a lot of times people, the first time I talk to them, I say, well, what's your goal? When do you want to be in your new house? And they said, oh, maybe six months from now. And I'm like, okay. And so we start doing that buyer consult. We talk about the process and the, how to be ready to be a buyer and getting the lender in the process so that when you find the right house, we're already there. We don't have to go, oh no, do you, does this payment cover? Are you comfortable? But we often see that people say, I'm sometime next year, six months next year, I want to buy a house. And once we teach them about the market and we show them their first three houses, very often they're ready to buy right away. They just don't know that it can happen very quickly. A lot of times they just assume that it takes a long time to be a homeowner and it really doesn't have to. Yeah. yeah. So the last one is what should I look for during home tours? And that's a good one because you and I look at homes very differently. You are details. You walk out of a house and you say, did you see that crown molding in the third bedroom and blah, blah, blah. And I go, no, <laughs> what should we be looking at when we tour a home? I think first off, and, and this is going to sound a little woo, but it's how does it feel? Right. How do you feel when you walk in the house? And that's you know? what most buyers do. They decide really quickly. They walk in and the house speaks to them, right? Yeah. And they said, well, I said I needed a three-car garage and only has two, but that's okay. I said I needed blah, blah, blah. doesn't have that, but that's okay. And they fall in love with the house. But then the buyer should go, how old is the roof? How old is the furnace? How old is the cooler? What things am I going to need to do? And I think one of the things, and I think most people re recognize this anytime they're shopping for anything is make the list of your negotiables and non-negotiables. A negotiable might be, I'd like to have wood floors. I'd be okay with tile, right? A non-negotiable would be, I need four bedrooms. Absolutely, positively, it cannot have three, right? So make that list. So some people it's pitch roof or no pitch roof. Some people it's HOA, no HOA. Swimming pool, no swimming pool. The list goes on and on. And from showing lots and lots of houses over the last 22 years, 
even those non-negotiables go out the window sometimes when you find the right house and it speaks to you and they go, yep, that's okay. I can deal with this or I can change it later. And go. that's yeah. great because first people emotionally love the house. And then we like to look at the bigger picture of, of what the house is really all about. So that's the scoop. That was, yeah, good, good info. If, if you are a thinking about buying or you know somebody thinking about buying and they want to have a, a consultation, it's, you know, that's what we do. We sit down, go through your haves and wants, figure out what's going to work for you, connect you with a, a, a good mortgage person if you need to go down that route and go through the process. We have a full consultation that we'd be happy to do with anybody. So thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. We appreciate you. And please click subscribe. We'll keep you updated on what's going on with real estate in the Albuquerque area and New Mexico, and of course, across the entire country. Have a great one.